Hello and welcome to the uh, daily creative challenge for Adobe Illustrator. My name is Ryan Selvey. I'm a motion designer, illustrator, graphic designer here on Adobe Live. And I'm excited to be with you guys for the next four days as we go through a little challenge that we make a really cute kids activity placemat seat. Um, this can be for maybe your own kids if you wanted to give them something a little bit more personal that can be added to dinner time or just to keep them preoccupied and not on an iPad or maybe it's something that you want to create and sell online it could be um, also something if you're planning an event or a birthday party that you could even adapt it to adults as well and make it any way that you want to make it um, we're going to be working through a few different things throughout the week um, including creating word searches um, and creating different activities that will be on the sheets but I have come up with a few different ideas as to how, um, what theme we're going to have for the placemat. So let's just hop right into Adobe Illustrator and we can try to figure it out. Also, this is a live stream. If you're watching the replay, we're still going to make it worth your time. Um, but if you're here live, thank you for being here. A big great thank you to uh, Cody Bear for being our moderator today over here on both uh, YouTube and on Behance. It's great to see you guys here. Um, and so I went ahead and I just pulled a few um, inspiration pieces from the internet around. Um, also, hello to Rick and Robert, Frank, Valentina, Kendall, Umicorn, Paloma, Audrey, um, everybody in the chat uh, is saying hello. Thank you for being here and really appreciate you being here. Um, but yeah, so I just pulled some um, pieces of inspiration up offline. Um, we have this camping activity mat. You can see that they have a crossword. They have some connect the dots. They have tic-tac-toe areas. They have a coloring area. Um, for this other camping activity mat, we have a maze. Um, we have see if you can spot the difference between things. We have back to school with a mirrored image teaching kids how to mess with symmetry. Um, and you can really have fun with any way of trying to just find additional um, stimulus to have a kid go ahead and um, jump in and create their own work and finding ways that every kid will have a different experience when uh, approaching the um, back to school or the, the, the placement. So this is where I'm going to actually turn it to you guys because I have a few different ideas as to um, the type of different placements that we could have. It is the beginning of um, school season and obviously these kids would have back to school which we could always do um, even as seen in the um, example. We could also do Johnny Appleseed because believe it or not you should pick apples in September not for um, not October, even though it is a very autumnal idea. Uh, we can do Johnny Appleseed. We can always do uh, Outer Space because you guys know I love Outer Space. Kids love Outer Space. We could do Dinosaurs. And then the last one that I thought of is we can do Plants because I love plants and um, there is never enough plants. Uh, you can't really see it in my camera, but there are plants all around me. So what can you do? Um, but what do you guys think? Do you guys have a, a vote on anyone that you would want to see? Anyone that we should actually hop into? Let me know in the chat, and then we'll hop into it. In the meantime, um, while you guys are kind of picking one that we can have, one thing that I really liked about our examples is that they didn't even sacrifice the title as a means to give kids an opportunity to color and create within um, the, 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 the activity mat. So they made it so you could even color in the um in, in, in the text itself we have outer space plants from kendall space outer space plants all right so i guess we're doing outer space plants um so when we do that we're just going to go into the text tool and we're going to write out um outer space and I am just going to click on the cursor tool and I'm just going to scale it up. You could do this many different ways, uh, but for my sake, I just like to scale it that way because I'm not too married to the actual points. And then we can look in here. I want to do something that is a sans serif um, and pretty thick so that the kids have something to 
um, color in. We're going to go in and make sure that it is uh, only things that I got off of the um, the the Adobe Type Kit. So that way, everybody, if you guys like one here, you can also go for it. Um, Gibson Bold is nice and big, which is nice. Um, but we also could do something like Paraluxent, which I like to use a lot. Poppins is also a fun round type font. Um, Signo. I, I, there's just so many that are. I, I am a sucker for a sans serif font. I really like Gibson Bold in this case just because it is so large. And so what we're going to do is before we actually even outline it, um, we could do a few different things. We could go in here and we could do the um, touch type tool, which I really like. And you can click on individual letters and you can move them up and around. Uh, you can rotate them and um, you can move it so that they're nice and funky like this. And that's pretty fun. Um, but I also really enjoy kind of the uh, uniformity and the collection of having uh, just like a curvy line. So what we can do is we can go to the pen tool and we can um, click on these sides like this and we can add some points, maybe bring it up. I'm pressing the plus tool here. Um, and then we're going to obviously get rid of the fill. And one easy way you can do, and I like to do, is you can just click these two. And then you can just drag them out like that, maybe. Um, you don't have to be precious about this, because this is all editable. Um, especially with the Bezier curves. And we're just going to go in here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Type tool again. And this time, there will actually automatically switch over to type on a path tool. And when we click that, we can click outer space. Uh, I'll highlight it. And um, we will go ahead and increase the type here. Maybe we make it center. Uh, it'll probably be helpful to adjust the tracking out of here. Um, Roscoe's going to come saying hello. Hello, Roscoe. Um, and then, so what we're going to do, so the kids are going to be able to actually color this in, is what you should do is you should copy and take it off to the side like this. That way, if you need to come back to it later, you can, because we're about to be destructive, um, which just means that we're not going to be able to mess with the type as much anymore um, on a sense that is editable. And it, it's nice to just be able to go backwards. So we're going to go um, to type create outlines and what that'll do is that'll make it so that they're actually just shape layers at this point and one thing you could do is you could swap the fill and the stroke to have it look just like this um and that actually for all um for all purposes it actually works pretty well but uh i also really like to do object path offset path um and that's just going to do a little bit of a different uh way that it um, interacts with the fill and I like to have the joints of it be round to make it feel a little bit more playful um, so I'm going to decrease the offset just a tiny bit uh, to make it maybe like three points or something and then round meter limit uh, is just kind of how intense it needs to be in order for it to step in with the roundness so uh, everything is looking pretty good I'm going to go ahead and highlight all these guys um, and we can go in and then click here and go to white and now it's looking a little bit better now uh, as I said before everything is you know kind of still you can mess around with stuff so you can I'm gonna ungroup it and kind of mess with the kerning here a little bit more um, or the tracking if you want to be on a more of a macro level um, but just making something that the kids are able to really hop in and create something that they like so there's a few things that we're going to go over um throughout the week like i said we're going to be doing a uh, word search we're going to be doing um a, a maze and this is all things that can actually be pretty easily made in illustrator and you guys have 
full agency over kind of what you can create with this, whether it's the theme or it's the um, uh, uh, the theme or just the placement of things. So one of the first easy things is creating a star. You can just go to the star tool, you know, and with the star tool, you can actually press the up and down arrows on your keyboard to change the amount of points that are actually going to be on your star. And um, for this case, we're just going to make it, you know, like a normal uh, five point star. And I want to switch it so that it has a black outline. We can increase the stroke. Uh, but I want it to feel a little bit more playful. So one thing that we could do is we can just press the A button. And then once again, we get these little areas that have the corner selection. And when we go into there, we can maybe, you know, switch it down like this. Um, but I still want it to be more playful. I, I didn't want to have these intersections be blobby because then it kind of, you can kind of see how it's working. Um, what you can do is, you know, you can go to effect, uh, warp and inflate and with inflate you can have like a little more of a goofy um, looking looking guy here you know you could also just actually switch that out to bulge um, and you can really warp these in different fun ways uh, they don't have to be perfect they can um, kind of have a life of their own you can let's see what else you could do what if we do fisheye what does that look like Fish eye, that's what I'm looking for. So fish eye, we kind of get this uh, this more obese looking uh, star, which is fun. And then you can always, you know, go in and go into uh, object expand uh, uh, appearance, and it will move the new lines over to um, your new star, which is fun. So let's go ahead. We can go like this. Maybe we're gonna press R and do a little rotate action increase the stroke so it matches um, this over here and we're also going to go over here we're going to copy this by holding down um, alt and dragging it um, and maybe just putting it on the other side as well bloated soup star yummy yes exactly that gives you like the idea of maybe uh, the um, the old soup that you would um, get like spaghettios or something like that so one thing that i think that would be nice that we could do is maybe we do the planets and we build them around the um we build them around the space and we can say that you can you can find how many planets there are and nothing's easier here um hey alessandra and we can go ahead and create just a circle path and what you can do is we're going to go into the shape builder tool to actually create uh, some rings around this. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go into the ellipse tool. We're going to go like this. And um, now we have this wonderful uh, ring around it. I'm going to copy it and do paste in place and then bring it down a little bit more. Uh, then I'm going to make sure that our strokes are matched. And what we can do is we can highlight both of these guys. And if we go to the Shape Builder tool, oh, da -da, it should be Shift M. Um, you can actually click into it, and it will acknowledge it as a shape itself. You can also go in and go into the Fill Bucket tool, which is fun. And with the Fill Bucket tool, you can actually um, like click into individual places and build it out if we hadn't made that into a singular thing um, which actually might be beneficial to us actually so let's undo what we just did and um, I'm gonna go into the shape builder tool and rather than making it the full ring we're going to highlight all of our object to let us know that we want it to take um, an understanding of all of these so we're gonna click in and I want to make it so it doesn't go behind here. Then we can actually go and hop in um, to this shape that we have. Um, and we can actually delete it because uh, we just need to identify that that's the thing that we want to delete. Um, and click in and then uh, delete it out. Now it's giving us a little bit of trouble because it um, sees us having the uh, it's like it's it's making it so the top is its own thing like that uh, and we don't necessarily want that so you can actually also go in 
um, and kind of fight it by selecting what we need to select, maybe the top, go into the shape builder tool like this, connect these. Um, oh, we should, actually, we should just highlight everything, right? Um, highlight everything. Shape builder tool, connect it all. And bada bing, bada boom. Look, now we have like a little Saturn situation going on. The other fun thing is, like, you know, you can go in here and you could click around um, and and make fills if you wanted to. But that's kind of a lot of clicking sometimes. And what you can actually do is you can go and underneath the Shape Builder tool, there's the Live Paint Bucket tool. And when you open up that, you're going to see that you get this cursor and you have these swatches above you. It's going to initially kind of just pull from the swatch that you have active. But the cool thing that I recently learned is that you can go in and when you pull up your swatches palette and you press right and left on your keyboard, you can see over here that it's just going to go across the swatches that I already have saved. Um, so you can continue to go right and you'll see that as I do, it's also showcasing it above the paint bucket tool as well as showing its uh, activation within the swatch tool, which is really cool. Um, so for this case, we're going to just go ahead. Maybe we'll make it like black because we know that um, they're going to want to color their own thing. Um, or maybe you want to do something that has like a little bit of color in it as well. So you want to go in and um, maybe make some choices for the kids and say, you don't get to decide what color that is. I get to decide what color that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so maybe you go like that uh, and you can move it around. Uh, we can put it up here. We can put it on its side. And um, we can do something like that. Now, we're going to want a few other planets as well. So we can kind of take a similar um, approach to here. One thing that we can do that I love to do is you can um, actually create like a clipping mask if you want or something. We could go in here and create a stroke. We're going to um, actually hold down um, shift and the tilde key. And when you do shift in the tilde key, it will actually let you create a curve in your path that will automatically update. So the tilde key, if you don't know, is the little um, key that looks like this. Um, and it's right next to your one. Uh, so like, you know, do, 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 do. You know, it's got that little situation going on it. Just for your guys' reference, go like over here. One. Bada bing, bada boom. It's that one. So if you hold shift and then you hold that key, that's how you can actually switch it up. And uh, we're going to say that we want to increase the stroke here. We're going to get rid of the fill. And um, one of the really fun ones that you can actually mess with is the, uh, the width tool. And that allows you to actually hop in here and you can adjust the sizing of the planet uh kind of jupiter thing we got going on here maybe we put a little uh circle in here like the eye of jupiter we can switch it out um you can go in and maybe uh add another sort of squiggles squiggly wort over here um and increase the stroke like that um the swoopy key as <laughs> clever says for the tilde key so whatever you call it whatever it works um, so we have all that and what we're going to do is we will highlight, we'll, we'll actually create a group of these guys. So we'll shift, uh, and click on all of them, press control G and then they are, are a unit, um, and the unit they are, am I right? And then what we do is we move the planet to the front by pressing control shift and right bracket, which brings us to the very top and says, I want to put this on top. You then highlight everything and you click uh, right click and then click make clipping mask you will have it then actually get rid of the previous area that we had and what you can actually do is if you have it selected you can um, actually still give it a color which is fun um, and uh, we lost our little um, dude over here so we're going to hop into isolation mode isolation mode is one of those things that I hated growing up because I did not understand how it worked but now that I understand how it works it is such a godsend um, it helps you hop into um, 
things without messing with other layers and you can just get there by double clicking into it and it's super helpful because then anything that's over here isn't going to be affected even if we zoom out and i'm like "Ooh, i want to mess with this you can't you're just here and also since we're in isolation mode within our clipping mask we can continue to add lines if we want to um and it's only going to show up in our handy dandy clipping mask which is really cool and remember, you can use that shape um, tool if you want to mess with specifically the shapes. You can also do your width tool here, and you can click through and make them smaller and bigger. And it doesn't even adjust the size of the um, stroke width, so you can increase it and decrease it, and we'll keep that in mind for you. Um, now, we made these all um, their own thing. So what I would like to do is go to expand appearance. Um, but you'll see when I do that, actually, it um, created a, a weird outline for them. So I'm actually gonna make sure that we don't have any fills here. And there's another way that we can also do is we can go to um, uh, object path outline stroke, and that will create outlines for it. I want to um, make it all outlineable. So we're gonna make it black. Maybe we increase the stroke here. Um, looks like a pirate. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's our pirate planet. Um, and you'll see we accidentally got a little stroke here because we didn't have the fill uh, turned off there, but that's just an easy delete if we want to. You can go back in. Um, you can select your planet. And um, if you want to, um, we could maybe say get rid of the fill or something. And maybe we want to add like a stroke. Um, why, are giving, why are you giving me a hard time? Don't embarrass me in front of my friends. There we go. Uh, we're going to make this a white. And then we're going to do a black ring around it. And there we go. We're going to increase it. I accidentally turned it to white. Go. And we can decrease. And there we go. And now we're only doing the space section right now, but I did not ignore you guys. I'm thinking tomorrow what we can do is we could also even create a small thing um, down here in a way that maybe like we create like a box and um, we can maybe create like a flower pot of some sort, you know, like this. And um, as you do that, you could have some instructions to like build your own space planet. What do you, what do you think that looks like? And we can create one that looks a little bit wonkers um, right next to it that can then be able to also kind of exist in this spot. And um, the fun thing is, yeah, like you said, you really have full agency. There's no rules for um, creating these kids' activity packets. You can just create whatever you want. And, um, you know, kids' imaginations will do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. <laughs> Kendall says Illustrator always embarrassing people in front of their friends. I think it's just me in any program, honestly. It doesn't even have to be Illustrator. <laughs> um, also, hi, Jack. Welcome to the stream. Hope I'm not making you mad. I'm uh, making you proud uh, in the Illustrator challenge for you. Um, but yeah, so that's what we pretty much have for it. We can go ahead and create maybe one more planet because we have like two minutes left. Um, and if you guys have any questions about any of the planets that we're making, maybe even like creating a cool little moon, you know, that um, I did that by holding alt and holding down the side and then opening up something new. But we can do the same sort of thing where maybe um, we create some craters, make little tiny ones like this. Um, make a dat. Uh, and we'll make sure that they're all the same stroke by pressing the I button um, and switching through. Uh, once again, we're going to group these guys. We're going to bring this guy to the front and then we'll do a clipping mask in the same way that we did. We'll make sure that we have this clicked on. We'll go into isolation mode so it knows what we're talking about. We'll tell it to be white and have a black outline. We'll increase the stroke. Um, and decrease the stroke, <laughs> lol. Um, and then we also have like a little moon situation going on. So it's really easy. You can just, you know, hop on in, you can play around with it. Um, maybe we do something where tomorrow we say like count the number of planets. Um, 
but stay tuned throughout the week. Uh, we're going to be working on word searches, mazes. We'll be working on also a little bit of Adobe Express and how to advertise that you have it. Um, and we can have a lot of fun with stuff. If you guys have ideas as we kind of move along with it, please let me know. Um, I'm really excited to continue to create these. And um, if you have any feedback, please let me know. I'd love to see your own placemats in the Discord. So make sure you hop into the Illustrator Discord and you throw in any placemat that you're working on. And I hope we can create something really cool together. Once again, my name is Ryan Selvey. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, we have some more coming up next on Adobe Live, so don't move. Stay where you're at. And um, thank you for being here. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good one.